Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Alley. In this video, I'm going to show you how to overcome the objection when somebody says, I need to shop around. There are two important things that will change your life and forever, this will no longer be a problem for you. You guys are going to watch this full video. It's going to blow you away. Here's what I want to tell you. There's two separate scenarios that I'm going to be going over in this video. Scenario one is going to be when a customer threatens to go shop around, and it's a lot of objection, okay? So this is gonna be an objection where maybe you're outside on the lot and the customer, maybe they're looking at some cars and they're doing some stuff and maybe you've showed them a couple vehicles. Maybe you've even showed them a vehicle that they love and they say, hey, I think we got a couple more cars we gotta go look at. And when that comes in, that objection would be scenario one, that's gonna be on the lot. Scenario two is gonna be when someone says they need to go shop around during negotiations. This is going to be scenario two. So there's two really important things before we get into each scenario that you've got to understand that's really important for you as a salesperson to understand. Now look, number one, is the customer bluffing? What does that mean? That means this. So a lot of people will try a salesperson on. Okay, so salespeople, a lot of the times when somebody says, hey, I think your price is too high. You know what, I'm not paying that for my trade. You know what, give me my keys. When that stuff starts coming in, salespeople get really nervous. You've got to stay calm. Remember, you've got to hold yourself together. It's a customer's job to understand that if they want to buy something, they have to say what? An objection, because the closer they get to buying, they want to say an objection that maybe could convince them that they shouldn't buy. Why? Because people don't want to spend a lot of money. But I will tell you something, all right? When they throw the bluff, if you handle it right, they will be in your business office and you will be selling them very fast. One is what I call the bluff. They're looking for a better deal. They love the car, they don't want to leave, but they're going to tell you that they're going to leave because they know that it drives you crazy, right? As salespeople, who wants to hear the words, we're going to go shop around? Not me, I hate it. But guess what? Now I love it. Because when they tell it to me, if I've done my job right, if I know I've got them on the right vehicle, and if I feel that inside of me that I've got them on the right car, but all of a sudden they're trying to get out, this is just a bluff. Right. Guys, I'm about to get right back to the video. I want to tell you, number one, thank you for watching this video. Please like this video. If you like what you're watching right now, click the button. Give me a thumbs up on it. Comment below. Anything you need, I got you. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Set your notification bell so every single day when I put out brand new cutting edge training videos, you can get them. All right, the second part is going to be a true meaning. Okay, say, Andy, what, what does that mean? This is a feeling or maybe them being unsure that this is where they're going to get their best deal. Look, just because you have the car that somebody wants doesn't mean that they have to buy it from you. The beautiful thing about why I love sales training is because if you're 10 times better than your competition, guess what can happen? You can take your competition out every time. Your competition across the street that's asleep at the wheel probably isn't training right now and thinking about how to get better and how to overcome this objection. You know what they're probably doing? Telling stories around the coffee pot, uh, you know, complaining about last week. They're probably, you know, cancerous, I don't know, not us. We are training, we are pushing ourselves as we're elevating our game. I want you to understand this. When you hear the objection, somebody say, hey, I think I'm gonna go shop around. I want you to say to yourself, does this person feel like they're not gonna get the best place here, the best deal here? Do they really feel like they're not gonna get the best deal? Or is it not that? Do they love this car and they're really just trying to uh, make me come down on my price. What do, what do customers love to do? They love try to, to try to speed us up. You know what that means? As salespeople, we try to slow the customers down, make them fall in love with the vehicle. When customers want something more than they want the, mo they the money that they have in their pocket, they'll spend it. So we try to speed them up, okay? Or I'm sorry, they try to speed us up. We try to slow them down. So why they say objections like this is so that they can speed us up and we can do things like, you know, what if I made you a deal you couldn't say no to? You know, what, what if I could bring the price down $2,000 more? 
You know, and we start getting into begging mode and we get out of closer and salesman mode, okay? So with that being said, what I'd like you to do is let's go to scenario number one. This is gonna be a lot of objection, okay? So let's say that I'm outside on the lot and the customer says, you know what, Andy? I think we're gonna have to go look around. I'd say, okay, all right, I got you. So um, look, so number one, I feel like that we found the right vehicle, right? I mean, obviously we drove it, uh, your wife loves it. I, obviously everybody seems really happy with the car. Um, from one to 10 being one, I, I wouldn't take it if it was free, um, or 10, let's go right now, I wanna buy it. Um, where do you guys find yourself? One to 10, one being no, I wouldn't take it even if it's free, and 10, I love this car, I wanna take it home right now. Where are you? Uh, Andy, maybe a seven. All right, guys, what would make it a 10? Just be quiet. That is my go-to when somebody wants to shop around. Why? Because, listen, your customers have something going on inside their head. They have something going on inside their head. And that stuff is important information. If you don't know what that is, how can you close them? So what I want you to understand is there is an underlining problem, okay? Or... A customer could just be probing for a better deal and they could want to get you nervous and actually see if there's something that you're not giving them by bluffing you this allows me to get both answers number one if they do want to shop around because they think they're not going to get the best deal whenever I say this hey guys if you know from one to ten being one you wouldn't take it if it was free or ten right let's rock and roll and go right now let's do it right where do you find yourself with this car one, I wouldn't take it if it was free. Ten, let's go right now. Uh, Andy, a six. Hey, awesome, what would make it a ten? And when they answer that question, it's either going to be information that you can control and handle, or maybe they're totally not interested in the car altogether, and they say, a three. I would, Andy, I'm really a three on the car. Guess what? It tells me I haven't done my job, and guess what? I've got them on the wrong car. But in this case, I'm fast-forwarding past all that, and I'm believing that you've got them on a vehicle that they love, a vehicle that they like, and a vehicle that probably matches their needs and wants through the assessment, right, the CNA. And guess what? Right now, you're saying to them, one up, if it was free, 10, let's go right now. Where would you rate it? Um, I don't know, probably an eight. Awesome, what would make it a 10? Just be quiet. That next thing that they say that comes out of their mouth, that is the very thing that's going on inside of their head. And guess what I want you to know? It's not going to be, we want to shop around. I asked what would make the car a 10. And you know what that does? That extracts that issue, that problem, that, that, that issue why they're not going forward. And then you can say, all right, guys, great. So what you're saying, as long as I can handle that, that will make that a 10 and we've got a deal. It doesn't matter, right, about going around and shopping around and doing all that. It's just that you want to find the right car and we want to make sure it's a 10. And now that you told me how to do that, what I would like to ask is, it's not a matter of if you're going to buy, but when. And the win is probably when the deal's right, right? So, let's do this. I'll take care of whatever it was that you said that would make this a 10. And if I handle that part, you love the car, we're here, I'm here, you're here, your time's valuable, my time's valuable. One thing you can't ever get in life is more time. Guys, let's take care of this. Let's go. Thank you so much. I'm going to handle everything for you. Guess what? That is how to handle a shopping around, somebody threatening you on the lot that they want to leave. Try my 1 to 10. It works great, okay? Practice it over and over. Get it down. Become really comfortable with it. And remember, what would make it a 10? Remember, 1, right? I wouldn't take it if it was free. 10, let's go right now, okay? Where do you rate this car? 1 to 10. They say, blah, blah, blah. You say, great. What would make it a 10? Smile. Look at them. What would make it a 10? They give it to you. That's your answer. That is your answer. Handle it. Let's roll. By the way, if there's a feeling or an unsure easy, right, feeling that they're in the right place, at that time, it could be, I mean, would it just have to be a better deal? Awesome. So, so the car's great. It's just the deal. And that's, that's the problem, am I right? That's what would make it a 10. The car's great, but what would make the car a 10 would be the deal with the car. Is that right? Great, awesome. So it's not a matter of if you're gonna buy, but when, and the, and the when is when the deal's right, right? Cool, so what I wanna do is I wanna tell you, you don't have to go shop around. If I have the right car here, you're here, I'm here, the car's here. If we can make the deal right, right now, that would work perfect for you, right? Follow me inside, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take care of that for you, no problem. 
You guys can handle that, but guess what? Whatever it is that you do, don't you dare panic when somebody says they want to go shop around. It's not worth it. You don't need to. Just memorize scenario one. All right, scenario two. This is during negotiating. Listen, there are two things that are going on inside someone's head when they're purchasing. Number one, first of all, we're talking about negotiating. So I'm guessing we have some numbers on the table. Okay? When I present these numbers to you, let's say it's 18.9, 300 a month, 1,000 down, 7,000 for the trade, whatever. I'm just writing some numbers here, okay? So you guys can get an idea. There's some numbers on the table. And I say, hey guys, these are the numbers, these are the deals. They say, hey, that's what you give me for my trade. Is that gonna be my payment? What's the interest rate? And I'm going over this stuff with them. And guess what? They're interested in the car or they wouldn't be here. So one, they're gonna try me on for a better deal. And they're gonna say, well, Andy, you know what? I think we're gonna go look around. Because they know that I smell that I'm this close, right? Like literally, I'm 98% done with my car deal. I just gotta get them to sign that last 2% of the time, and guess what? My deal's done. But now that last 2%, guess what they say? We're gonna go shop around. What happens? Salespeople panic. Managers panic. For the first time, the salesperson is going to get emotional. See, our job is to make our customers extremely emotional. Do you know what? Salespeople never should get emotional. But guess what? For the first time, because you see you only have 2% left to go, guess what happens? You start to panic. You get emotional. And when you get emotional, you make bad decisions. And guess what that leads to? either negotiating down and losing all of your gross or making a wrong turn and even losing the customer that was ready to buy. So what do you say? Well, let's look at the two scenarios. One, we got a person wanting a better deal. I'm gonna show you how to handle that. And then secondly, we got a person right here that really honestly doesn't feel like they're getting a great deal. They don't feel it. Do you know what that lets me know? That lets me know that you haven't done what's called buyer management. You haven't managed your buyer. And do you know what that means to manage your buyer? It means to manage their state, okay? The state that they're in. How do you do that? You do that by staying with them the full time. You see the energy that I have? This is the energy that I push into my customers. Do you know what influencing, persuading is? It's the way that I feel pushing it into someone else. Are you making your customers feel like this? Or are you making your customers feel like this? You control their state, it's called buyer management. Now think about this for a second. You control whether they feel like they're getting a great deal or not. It is a feeling. You're the one that has to supply that feeling. But before you can get into buyer management, you have to get into seller management. And we are the sellers. And that means controlling our energy, our state, our motivation, our mindset the way that we work the deal, our engagement with the customer the entire time, reciprocity, offering them things like coffee and popcorn and water and Cokes, anything that they need. When you do something for someone, they want to do something back for you. Guess what? This happens in this state, okay? Don't invite them into the store. Invite them into your home. Don't treat them like they're at a car dealership. Treat them like they're at your house. People will act different. Guess what? When I have that state, and they're fired up, you know what? They'll never have to worry about this again. Okay? That right there, that feeling, that unsure feeling, I'm going to take it away. It will be gone. Make sure you handle that. That is the only way that you will handle this here, is by doing seller management. Management. Manage yourself, and then manage the buyer. Now, let's go back to the better deal, the bluff. Okay, I'm going to shop around. Listen, they're interested in your car, right? Right, or they wouldn't be inside on paper. So guess what I know? I know they're looking for a way out or they're looking for a better deal, but the objection they're going to give me is, I think we want to shop around. And then guess what we start doing? Salespeople start doing the stupidest thing. We start saying, well, what are you going to go look at? Whoa, what? Don't 
don't you ever say, what are you going to go look at? How about this? What they're going to go look at doesn't matter. Don't talk about stuff that don't matter. Why don't we talk about what matters? This deal. Guys, I get you know the fact that, and, and listen, and I appreciate the fact that you said that you want to go look around and shop around, and, 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 and I love it. Um, with that being said, guys, look, I've been doing this for a long time. And 99% of my customers, when they say they want to go shop around, one, they're either no longer interested in the deal, okay? And I don't think that that's your case. You guys love a car, correct? Right? Okay, then secondly, it's that there's something wrong with the deal. So what I'd like to do, would you mind if I'd be direct with you for a second? Would that be okay? Is it the 300 a month, the 1,000 down, or the 7,000 for your trade? Which, which one of those numbers is, is it that's bothering you? What I'd like to do is bottom line this deal. I would be direct with you. Would you mind being direct with me? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Take the deal back off of the objection and pull it back to the negotiation. Okay? Write it down. When my customers tell me that they need to go shop around, what 99% of them, what they're telling me is that, and I've been doing this for a long time, is that either one, they're no longer interested in the deal, but I know that's not your case. Now look at me, I'm telling you how to think. Or it's the latter, right? Which is secondly, something's wrong with the deal. Would you mind if I be direct with you for a second? Would that be okay? Let's bottom line this deal. Is it the price, the payment, or the trade? And I'll bet you have a pretty good idea that I might not even need to ask that question. I'll say, guys, let's bottom line this deal. I've heard a lot of questions about the payment. It sounds to me like the payment's just a little bit out of reach. Am I right? And you see my head? Am I right? Yes. And guess what? Now I get my yes. Now the objection was not I need to shop around. That was a smoke screen for there's a problem with the deal. Guess what? Handle the problem. I isolate the objection, the real objection, which is the payment's too high, and now I have something to handle. Guys, this video, when someone says that they want to shop around, you have scenario one here on the lot, you have scenario two inside the office. These two scenarios, I hope this helps you guys. Take what you've learned in this video and write it down on paper. Guys, I've got a million things to teach you. This is just one of the many. I appreciate you guys. You have a blessed day. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, thank you for watching the full video. I started when I was 18 training just like you, no matter where you're at in life. I want to tell you this. Being committed is all that it takes. I put out free training content on YouTube every single day to make sure that I can take you to the next level of life. I have over 500 free videos. Please make sure that you like the video. Shoot me a comment below and shoot me a text message. I'd love to get to know you, okay? If I haven't met you yet, 918-210-0254. Take a second, guys. Shoot me a text message. You're important to me. I have your back for life. We're going to go all the way to the top together. I appreciate you. you guys have a blessed day. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and set your alerts for the daily training video. Thank you.